الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا الى يوم الدين اما بعد we start off today in our usul al-thalatha class on chapter number 3 last week we finished chapter number 2 with wala and bara at the end we start chapter 3 and we said if you remember when i gave you the structural breakdown of the book we said this is the core of the book chapter 3 is the book according to some. This is the chapter that has the three real, official, main, fundamental principles, what you call fundamental principles. Chapter one had four introductory principles, fundamental principles. Chapter two had three matters or issues. Chapter three is the real object and subject matter of the book. It's what the book is titled after. Meaning when you say Al-Usul Al-Thalatha or Al-Thalatha Al-Usul, the three fundamental principles, it is this chapter. And he starts off the chapter saying, I'lam arshadaka Allahu li ta'ate. I'lam arshadaka Allahu li ta'ate. No, may Allah direct you to obedience to Him. No, may Allah direct you to obedience to Him. We spoke on why the author starts with dua at least twice before. And he did that uh, before, that's why we spoke about it. Over here he says, Me arshadaka, means to direct you. Arshadaka from arrushd, meaning, may Allah direct you to uprightness upon the way of truth. Arrashad is the path of guidance, like the verse says, وَقَالَ الَّذِي آمَنَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُونِي أَهْدِكُمْ سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ the man who believed said, Oh my people, follow me. Believer said, follow me. I will guide you to the way of Rashad, the way of right conduct and guidance. So Rashad in the verse means correct path or guidance. In here, guidance is four types. Overall guidance is four types. Al-Hidayah al amma the first one, Hidayah Al-Amma Al-Mushtaraka Bain Al-Khalq. It's mentioned in the verse, Al-Ladhi A'ta Kulla Shayin Khalqaw Thumma Hada. Our Lord is the one who gave everything, each thing, and everything, its form and nature, and guided it. He created everything, and He guided it. He gave each person His physical image. He gave physical parts and features, and then guided each part to what it was created for. He gave form and nature, and guided it to work for was what it was created for. That's number one. Number two is Hidayatul Bayani Waddalala wa Ta'rif li al Khair wa Shar. Guidance to direct and show you, show you what? The right and evil path. This guidance shows both ways and what to choose. But it doesn't necessarily include or mean anything about the choice itself. We guided him to the right, 
and to guided him to the, uh, uh, the path of hell. We told him, follow this and stay away from this. That's all it means. It's mentioned in the two-worded verse of Surah Al-Balad, وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ Shown him the two ways, the good and evil. It's to show the good and evil, that's all it is. It's the verse mentioned in Surah Fussilat, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمَى عَلَى الْهُدَى أَيْ بَيَّنَّا لَهُمْ وَارْشَدْنَاهُمْ وَدَلَلْنَاهُمْ Thamud, we showed them the guided way. But they chose blindness over guidance. So Allah showed them, but they chose blindness. And then it's also in Surah Al-Shura, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَحْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ That's the second one. The third guidance is هِدَايَةُ التَّوْفِيقِ وَالْإِلْهَامِ this is the guidance where one is actually on the right path. This is the one that's from Allah to the righteous people. Messengers show the path, but this guidance is totally from Allah. In fact, Allah denied that messengers have this type of guidance power. Surah Al-Qasas, you can't guide who you, you want. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلِلْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَا نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ صِرَاطِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ In this verse he said, the messenger guides. The messenger guides in a way, but it's not the guidance that of tawfiq from Allah. The success comes from Allah. So uh, before we go on, what's the difference between the second and the third guidance? So you'll never forget it. The second guidance means you have two avenues. Here's the right avenue, here's the wrong avenue. Stay away from the wrong one, follow the right one. That's all it is, number two. Category number three means one is actually guided by Allah. And we ask Allah to be among that. Now the fourth type of guidance is guidance to heaven or hell when one is taken to him. Al-hidayah ila al-jannah wa nar idha siqa insan ilayhima. That's mentioned in the verse. Sayahdihim wa yuslihu ba'lahum wa yudkhilum al-jannah ta'arrafa lahum. Surah Muhammad. He will guide them to the path of jannah. Sayyidkhilum al-jannah ta'arrafa lahum. Or in Surah Al-Safat, مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَهْدُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُ مَسْئُلُونَ And guide them to hellfire. Here, in this booklet, the author is making dua that Allah guides you, directs you to the path, the guided path, which is the number three. اِعْلَمْ أَرْشَدَكَ اللَّهُ لِطَاعَتِهِ طَاعَةً is obedience, conformity, with what is required by doing what is commanded to be done and avoiding what is forbidden. Conformity with what is required by doing what one is ordered to do and to avoid what is forbidden and sinful. Okay, let's go on with our phrase. اعلم أرشدك الله لطاعته أن الحنيفية ملة إبراهيم no, may Allah direct you to his obedience that Al-Hanifiyya Millat Ibrahim. Al-Hanifiyya Millat Ibrahim. What is this Al-Hanifiyya Millat Ibrahim? And it's in the Quran many times. It's all over the Quran. And it's also mentioned in the Sunnah. In Surah Al-Baqarah. وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَ تَحْتَدُوا قُلْ بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ in Surah Ali Imran, ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين. قل صدق الله فاتبعوا ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين. In Surah Ali Imran, ومن أحسن دينا ممن أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن واتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا. In Surah Nisa. فلما رأى الشمس بازغة قال هذا ربي هذا أكبر فلما أفلت قال يا قوم إني بريء ما تشركون إني وجهت وجه للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفة إن سلطان إن أنا عام قل إنني هداني ربي لا صراط مستقيم دينا قيما ملة إبراهيم حنيفة وما كان من المشركين إن سلطة الأنعام 
إن إبراهيم كان أمة قانتا لله حنيفا ولم يكن من المشركين صورة النحل واتسس ملة إبراهيم حنيفة Mention this is just some verses there's more before we go deeper simply put the definition here's the definition al hanifiyyah is the religion that is free from shirk and founded upon purity and sincerity of intention for allah it's the true and straight pure religion it is islam now let's go to the root word and see uh, the connection in the meaning. In the real Arabic, the original Arabic, the old Arabs would say, Rijlun Hanfa with a Kasra and the Ra. Warajulun Ahnaf a Fatha and the Ra. The first one means, Rijlun Hanfa means a leg that's Hanfa. Leg that's Hanfa. Second one means a man who is Ahnaf. A woman, a female poet called Umm al-Ahnaf used to say, Wallahi lawla hanfun birijlihi ma kana fi fityanikum min mithlihi. A female poet used to say about someone, uh, using this root word, had he not had hanaf in his legs, there would not be in your youth anyone compared to him. He has a deficiency, otherwise he'd be the best one. We're using her line of poetry for linguistic purposes. Why would they describe legs or a man as being ahnaf or hanaf? Why would they use that? Because linguistically, when Arabs used to use it, ahnaf, for the legs or I'll talk about a man, they meant that person has pigeon toes or what's called intoin. When the toes are pointed toward each other, most people's toes are, normal people, are straightforward. Some toes point towards each other. We commonly refer to that today as pigeon toes or more medically appropriately called intoin. It's when the front portion of the feet at the rest turns inward. Turns inward. Look at that. Turns inward. Okay, now you're saying you're in your mind you gave us the definition of the shara'i meaning. Uh, that it's a purity and sincerity and away from shirk and all that. And then you went uh, a million miles away explaining the linguistic rule meaning of Hanifa. What's the term itself? It means linguistically. Uh, what's the purpose? The purpose I did that is to draw a connection between the linguistic meaning and the shari meaning that we took. Because like Islam, literally it means linguistically it's submission that's it with shari meaning is submission to allah with tawheed following in obedience and refraining from shirk just like in tajweed for example the noon is sakina rules there's always a connection between the literal linguistic meaning and the shari meaning there's always a connection now what's the connection between the linguistic meaning of hanifa in the Shari Islamic meaning that we mentioned. The connection is that Hanifa literally means to lean, to turn, to incline. And in the connection is, it's to incline and turn totally to Tawheed, lean towards Tawheed, and lean away from Shirk. Some defined Hanifi, some scholars, as turning to Allah and turning away from other than Allah. Because it means turn to. Turn into Tawheed and turn in away from Shirk. That's the connection. Al Qurtubi said, Hanifa, ma'ilan an al adyan al makruha, il al haq din Ibrahim. Hanifa is turning away from dislike faith to the true religion of Ibrahim. Ibn Ashur in his book, At Tahrir wa Tanweer, which is a 30 volume tafsir, he said, Hanifiyya or Hanif is when you veer off track. He stated that it was considered a praise to Ibrahim. He needed to veer off track because during his time, the people were in deep darkness and astray, so he turned away from that course. He turned away, he veered away, meaning he veered off the course of shirk, he turned away from shirk to, and he turned to the path of Tawheed. 
Sometimes it's good to be different. Sometimes it's best to take a detour that no one else has taken or a detour everyone else has warned you about. Ibn Ashur said after that, Al Hanifiya became a symbol or an honorary term of praise in honor of Ibrahim. Another point on Al Hanifiya is that it also means Islam. And Islam means Hanifiya. They can be used interchangeably during Ibrahim's time and during today in our Milla. Today, not many would understand if you say, I'm on the Hanifiya. Most you'd have to sit and explain it to him. Or if you tell him, I follow the Hanifiya, if he asks you, what's your religion? Just like not many during Ibrahim's time understood what Islam is. مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفَ مُسْلِمًا Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a Hanifa. A Hanifa, he mentioned Hanifa first, then Muslim. Hanifa and Muslima. Both terms were used there. Ibrahim turned away from both courses, both religions, and turned to Hanifa Muslima. We need to know that word in depth because it is a word that's very important and essential to the people of La ilaha Allah, especially the strongholders of Tawheed, those who study and want to master Tawheed. Ibn Ashur said Ibrahim used Hanifa in replace of Islam during his time at times because people back then didn't know what Islam is, so he used Hanifa because they knew what Hanifa was. Even though Ibrahim called himself Muslim, he used Hanifa because his people didn't know it. When he built the Kaaba, what was he saying? Him and his son. Rabbana waj'alna muslimaini. Oh Allah, make us Muslims. But then he used Hanifa. Why? Ibn Ashur said he used it because the people during his time didn't know what Muslim was. They knew what Hanifa was. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكٍّ مِّنْ دِينِ فَلَا عَبُدُوا الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ عَبُدُوا اللَّهِ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ وَمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَنْ أَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا وَلَا تَكُونَ أَنَّ مُشْرِكِينَ In Surah Yunus, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَأَنْ أَقِمْ You, direct you, direct your face, O Muhammad Allah is directing the Prophet to follow this Hanifiyyah Direct your face, O Muhammad, entirely towards the religion of Hanif In similar verse in Surah Al-Rum فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهِ لَا تَبْدِيلَ الْخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْتَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Even the Prophet ﷺ in his hadith said إِنِّي أُرْسِلْتُ بِحَنِيفِيَّةٍ سَمْحًا In Musad Ahmad I was sent with Hanifiyya Samha I was sent with Hanifiyya Samha And when he was asked the Prophet ﷺ What's the religion most beloved to Allah In Musad Ahmad What is it? He said Al-Hanifiyya As-Samha In Musad Ahmad he was, when he was asked What's the most religion that's beloved to Allah? He said Al-Hanifiyya As-Samha What's Al-Hanifiyya As-Samha? We took Al-Hanifiyya As-Samha means the easy going religion The religion that's very easy And as you know Our religion is founded on being easy If you look at our religion overall It's very easy And when matters are very difficult On one where he can't do them They turn to be easy with the exception rules that we have. However, there may be some details that are difficult and that one has to do if they're under his mean. It doesn't mean there's some aspects that are not diff difficult. There is some aspects that are difficult. Now, uh, the, the point is that Hanifiyya and Islam can be used interchangeably. You have to understand that. The last detail on this Hanifiyya issue is that don't get Hanifiyya and Ahnaf messed up. Uh, Al-Hanifiyya, the middle of Ibrahim is one thing, and uh, the Ahnaf, the followers of Abu Hanifa, which is the school of fiqh that uh, Abu Hanifa established, that's a total different thing. Uh, be, be, before we move on, let your fingers relax and your minds relax a moment. Uh, let me tell you this uh, personal dream that I always remember when I talk about this issue. 35 years ago or so, or close to it, as I always say, Islam back then wasn't popular or common. It was the movements on the scene were the secular movements, the nationalistic movements, the communist movements, the, the socialist movements. They were dominating even among those who claimed to be Muslim. 
Marcus and Lenin were like the stars and heroes for many who call themselves Muslim. And uh, all over the world, and more particular, in countries with calamities, in countries that are trying to liberate lands taken from them. Allah didn't take our lands and put us in the predicament that we're in today uh, for anything small or vain, uh, or because he oppressed us, ma'ad Allah. He touched the ummah for a tiny bit of their sins and forgave Allah. I remember my father bringing group after group of Muslims who, who were Muslims trying to convince them that Allah exists because now suddenly they adopt uh, communist and atheist ideologies. Some were growing beards not to look like our beloved وسلم, but rather to look like Castro and, and Guevara. Truly, tr I'm, I'm telling you facts. Others seen Jamal Abdel Nasser in Egypt in his nationalistic movement Mushel Aflaq's movement as the route to victory. Then others went with the secular route of Yasser Arafat. Each path stinkier and filthier and more rotten than the other path. The few who were called religious were at many times people of bid'ah. And then there was always the few, few, few who are on the truth. Many of you know, don't know this historic background because you were either young or not born back then. Actually, I myself was young a child. Um, so basically Islam wasn't as popular, as common as you see today or anywhere close to that. It was during those times that my father wanted to continue studies in Medina to face the challenges and doubts and better his knowledge even though at that time he was very knowledgeable and he had already learned with many mashayikh. From the will of Allah and his biggest blessing on our family is, and it's rare to see, uh, is that I told you people molt in their belief. Uh, they change and they molt in their belief and they change with how the news change and how the circumstance and the government change. But the manhaj I'm on today, Wallahi al azim is the manhaj my father taught me when I was a little kid. Nah. A tiny bit change and I say alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah that one had istiqama from young days and didn't molt and change. Uh, haven't lived through, let me say also, haven't lived through this pre-Islamic awakening stage and you see what the drastic ongoing change is going on in the, the, in the world. Uh, I really make dua and very much anticipate that within this decade the ummah will wake up to a sudden day of victory, a day that will please every believer and seeker of peace and displease every tyrant and oppressor and enemy of Allah. The day that we all long for when we hear of the Khilafah established on this earth. Uh, I believe inshallah ta'ala will be in this uh, decade. So my father in the 70s had the ambition to study in this university no one knew about. And he wanted me and my two sisters to go along uh, and memorize the Quran. And of course my mother, may Allah protect my sisters and also my mother, may Allah raise her rank to Firdaus. Uh, at that time, many ulama had come and visited us in the States. And they seen my father's da'wah activity which uh, impressed them. And they encouraged my father to cut his da'wah activity or pause it, go to Medina and come back, which only added more inspiration to what he wanted. And among those who visited was Sheikh Al-Harakan, rahimahullah, who's the Muslim, the head of the Muslim World League back then. And Abdullah bin Qa'ud, who was among the high ulama, rahmatullah alayhi, he also died. There's also Sheikh Sa'd al husayn he was uh, in charge of the Islamic affairs in Jordan for uh, Saudi. Uh, then uh, his inv he involved his two brothers, Ibrahim al husayn who was Ibn Baz's right-hand man and trustee for decades. And then uh, they had a third brother, which is Salih al husayn who you may have heard of, just died recently, months ago. He was the head of the committee for the Haram in Medina and Haram in Mecca. And many others who all pushed and helped my father to fulfill his dream to go to Medina uh, and many helped him get accepted. Uh, all those who I mentioned are dead with the exception of Sheikh Saad. 
May Allah have mercy on those who died of them. Uh, another, let me tell you another side issue. Sheikh Sa'ad al Husayn, who's the head of the Tuharam, who, who just died uh, recently, is probably one of the most humble men you'll ever meet in your life, and possibly one of the richest at the same time. When I used to sit in the Haram and memorize the Quran every day from Asr to Isha, and my father be in a halaqa with other mashayikh learning, he would take me and say, come on, let's go have lunch, you come back. Your father's not going to get mad. And really, my father, that was the only person my father would trust me to go with. And I would go with him. And one thing I learned about this man is how he was teaching me how dutiful he was to his mom. He told me if his mom is on a higher level, he won't go above that level and sleep. He'd stay on a first level. If she's on the second level, he'll stay on the first or second level and sleep. He won't go on a higher level and disrespect her. He took it as a form of disrespect. Even though he was in a high position and very wealthy. And it shows you how some take their mother and be dutiful to him. So take advantage if your mom or your parent is alive and be dutiful to them. So my father had obstacles in going and these people helped him. Among the obstacles uh, was, uh, for example, that he couldn't take the family. Back then it was impossible uh, to take a family. Allah made it easy, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made it easy out of his love to my father because that's who he grants knowledge to. Man bi khayran din. If Allah likes someone, if Allah wants good in someone, he will grant him fiqh of the deen. That's the hadith, the clear hadith. So like I said, one of the obstacles is, was it back then, it was impossible almost, actually was not known among any student uh, to take his family along with him. That would have, that doesn't happen back then. And if you try to do it illegally, they had checkpoints back then every two weeks set up. Medina was very small. And they had checkpoints where they would clear out anyone who was illegal. Unlike today where there's permits for students in Medina. And also there's other ways the students find around it. Uh, around, uh, you know, uh, taking them. Uh, my father wanted us all to benefit. And he wanted us to memorize the Quran. And if they decline us, he's, he's going to reject the acceptance. So in the midst of the days and spent in anticipation and looking forward to going to Medina, and if they'll all allow us all to go, uh, he had a dream. And he seen himself riding on a horse entering Medina with Ibrahim alayhi salam, welcoming him to Medina. And he was telling him, Tell Ibrahim told him, my father, in, in, in the dream, alayhi salam, you will be on the Hanifiyyah. You will master the Hanifiyyah. You will live on it and you will die on it. Or a statement closer to that. And may Allah make that true. Uh, months after that dream, we were all in Medina. And at the front gate of Medina, of, of uh, the university, my father looked at it and said, you remember the dream I told you about? This is exactly where I seen in the dream. This is the scene I seen in the dream. Uh, and I told you this because uh, every time I remember or teach or mention Hanifi or a lot of times when I recite it or read it, I remember the dream my father uh, had. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you and our beloved followers and students all over the world steadfast on Millet Ibrahim Hanifa, that we live on it, that we die on it, and that we be resurrected on it. Now let's go back to our text. اعلم ارشدك الله لطاعته ان الحنيفيه مله ابراهيم اوكي يو كان بيك اب يور بن سناب اوت اوف ات يو ستيل ثينكين اباوت ذا دريم اعلم ارشدك الله لطاعته ان الحنيفيه مله ابراهيم اعلم ارشدك الله لطاعته ان الحنيفيه مله ابراهيم المله مله ذا وورد مله مينز ذا واي هير ات مينز ذا واي ويتش ابراهيم فولود ان ريليجن Milla is the way in which Ibrahim followed in religion. I'lam arshadak Allahu li ta'ati anna al-hanifiyya millat Ibrahim. Millat Ibrahim. The next word is, we took milla, now the next word is Ibrahim. We know Ibrahim alayhi salam, the man Allah said about, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِنْ مَنْ أَسَّمَ وَجَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ who is better in religion than one who submits his face to Allah while he's a muhsin? 
and follows the religion of Ibrahim Hanifa. واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا and Allah took Ibrahim as his intimate friend and Allah took him as his friend and Allah chose him as his friend he is the خليل واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا the خليل of the most merciful is Ibrahim he's the father of the prophets and his way is mentioned repeatedly so that it will be adhered to it will be followed. قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ You remember the verse that we took yesterday, last week. قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Here, Ibrahim is a qudwa. He is an example for the Prophet ﷺ. He is a qudwa and he is an example for this ummah. He is the one-man nation. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةٌ Allah gave him wisdom when he was a young boy, as he said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلْ وَكُنَّا بِعَالِمِينَ We bestowed a four time on Ibrahim, his guidance. And we were well acquainted with him and his belief to the oneness of Allah. A boy, a boy, Raised in a house where his father made statues to be worshipped instead of Allah. He was worshipped or raised or raised. He was raised in an environment where statues were worshipped all around him. That was his environment. That's how he grew up. He stood against the people of his time. We want to show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And that he be one of those who have faith with certainty. When the night covered him, when the night came over darkness, in, in the darkness came, he saw a star, he said, that's my Lord. But when it set, he said, I don't like that which, that which sets. When he saw the moon, he said, this is my Lord. When it said, he said, Unless my Lord guides me, I will surely be among those who are astray. A young man who stands tough and teaches us the tactical, tactical debate to impose on your opponent what they believe in in a way that shows them how ridiculous and pathetic that belief is. Impose the idea on them to show them how pathetic and ridiculous it is. When he seen the moon, uh, when he seen the sun, he said, this is my Lord. When it set, he said, Inni bari I disown that which you worship. I have, Inni I turn my face to the one who created the heavens and the earth, Hanif and Muslimah. I turn my face to Allah and only Allah. Turn my face. That's Hanifa. I turn my face. Ibrahim is the ideal da'ya. He is the one who has wisdom in da'wah. He, has, he was the one who has manners in da'wah. It's statements he said when he said to his father, Ya Abati, Ya Abati. He's talking to a father who's opposed him, who was his enemy. Yeah, he's still telling him, Ya Abati, inni qad ja'ani min al-ilm. Oh, my father, have some knowledge. Ya Abati, la ta'abud shaitan Oh, my father, don't worship the shaitan. Ya Abati, inni akhaf. Oh, my father, I, 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 I fear that the hell's going to touch you. And then when he disbelieved and he got arrogant, he said, Salamun alayk. Look at the manners. Look at the wisdom in da'wah. When matters got serious, he got serious. He displayed his bara from them. And he said, Kafarna bikum. Wabada baynana wa baynakum al adawatu wal baghda. We disbelieve in you and that which we believe. And hatred and animosity has become between us. When they stepped it up, he stepped it up. And he said, What Allah ila kidanna asnama kum ba'da an tuwallu mudbirin. Wallah, I shall plot a plan and destroy your idols after you've gone away and turned your backs. He destroyed the statues into ruins except the big, big, big one. فجعلهم جذاذا إلا كبيرا لهم لعلهم إليه يرجعون قالوا من فعل هذا who has done this to our gods even though their lords were dust and dirt they still called their lords lords when the fitra goes from Hanifiya to its opposite it no longer has sense they're calling dust their lord 
قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ We heard a young boy. In court, he was the one-man nation. They took him to court. He was a one-man nation that spoke like a real man, even though he was a young, young teenager. He didn't coward and dilute his teaching or back away. He said, Offen lakum, fire upon you, and that which you worship besides Allah. Have you no sense? Qalu harriqu. They said, burn him. What did he say? They said, burn him. He said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah said, Kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Be cool and safe on Ibrahim. This is our Ibrahim alayhi salam. Khalil, the one Allah took Khalil. The one man nation, the one Allah says, he's a one man nation. The one Allah says, he's a Khalil. The one we're ordered to follow in his footsteps. The one our prophet was ordered to follow in his footsteps. The universal reviver of Tawheed on this earth. Ibrahim can ummah. Allah gives certification to this man as being a one man nation. It wasn't through luxury and comfort that he got it. It was through hardships and difficulties and trials that he got it. It was through wala and bara, through firmness and steadfastness, through da'wah and belief. Unwavering belief. May Allah bring about in this ummah more one man nation. Or more we need women. One woman nations to revive this Hanifi of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now you know what the author meant in his statement, Al Hanifiya Millat Ibrahim. When you read it in different forms throughout the Quran or in the Sunnah or when you see it anywhere, now you need know what Al Hanifiya Millat Ibrahim is. Uh, okay, it's Salah time. We'll take uh, time for salah then we'll come back we have uh, we'll take about a half an hour to 45 minutes of questions when we return uh, those of you who leave uh, before the questions uh, make sure you check your uh, emails and your uh, your uh, or your text whatever they send you to see if there's class next week because I'm not sure if they're going to be class so uh, make sure to check that جزاكم الله خير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم